Okay, it's great to be here. I'm really excited. I'm going to be showing you my point of view on how to design a book cover. There are many points of view on this subject, but this is mine, and I hope that you will love it. Um, and I'm going to be showing you examples from commercial publishing, things that I love, and some things that I totally hate. And I'll be showing you some things from my own students from some of the books that we've done together, where we look at book cover design and how to do it. And I'm going to show you examples from the contest, things that won and things that lost. Okay, But it's all beautiful. It's all work that, that people worked hard to create and good, good ideas. Um, and I'm going to share with you um, some points of view from the Department of Education, some secret information about stuff they don't want you to do that you won't find on your entrance application, okay? So I guarantee you will walk away with some very special data here to take back to your classrooms. Okay, so I have a list of things I want to tell you, and you might notice that I skipped number one because we're going to do that last, and I'm going to get your help uh, doing that at the end. So I'm going to start by talking about some of the formal ideas in making a book cover. And later, at the end, we'll talk about what it might mean or what kind of images you might use. But I'm going to start just with form. So number two is plan where the text is going to go. Okay. Now, this is a very unusual um, cover design competition because your students are being asked to design a cover of a book without the title. And that is not how graphic designers usually work. We usually put the image and the title together. But the way this cover is being used is it is not just going to be the cover of one book. It's going to be used for postcards. It's going to be used for supplements. It's going to be used for the list of middle schools, you know. <laughs> so although, you know, so we're doing this backwards, basically. And to have a really successful design, your students are going to have to think about where's the text going to go. So they're going to make a beautiful piece of art that has some empty space in it. And that's really hard for them to do. So I really encourage you, if you're doing the contest with your students, to have them work with type and remove it at the end because otherwise they're going to feel like they're making something that has a hole, and that hole is important in terms of how the design's going to come out. So anybody know what book cover this is? You want to guess? About 1997, so it's sort of an old book. Holidays on Ice. <laughs> okay. And so it's a book cover that has a very big image. I mean, it's a tiny book. It's a very, very tiny book. It has a big kind of life-size picture of a, you know, scotch on the rocks there for your holiday festivities. Um, but it definitely has left room for the information to go. Okay, so the design is image-based, but it's got space for text. I know no one's going to guess this because it's a very obscure novel about old people living in a retirement village by John Barth. And there's this great image of the, you know, ideal suburban home. And there's where the text goes, okay? So we want to be thinking about, you know, making space for text. And again, I think the best way to do this with your students is to have them work with some text and then eliminate it when you submit your artwork. Anybody know this one? Beautiful bestseller. Okay, and so if you look at the image, you know, that's a detail from some beautiful painting. Um, and that, that painting is just inviting us, right, to enter deep into this landscape. Um, and then, you know, there's the text. And there is simply, you know, the, the title of the book is able to completely dominate that image, right? We have no doubt about the title. Um, and yet the, the image makes this wonderful, mysterious background for the title of the book. So here's a winning cover design. Um, and here you can see that the design of the book includes a very large scale image, 
but also this wonderful device for putting the type in. And you can see that you know, the Department of Education really has to be able to do this text themselves. This is information that's going to change. They have all different uses for the image. Um, so it's very important that they be able to add things to the image and that the design that your students do be able to accommodate that, right? And so this is a very successful design um, in terms of it having all these functions, being very reproduction oriented, really making a place for the information. Okay, here's another one, create a focal point. And this is related, right? Because if you think about a book cover, it is different from making a painting, right? It has to bring our attention to something. And usually it is bringing our attention to the title. Um, this is a museum catalog. Um, and this is one of the things I hate. Like I can imagine the curators sitting around and telling the designer, you know, we must have four pictures on the cover, right? And I look at this as a designer, like I wanna redo everything, right? Like if you invite me to your house, I'll want to move your furniture around and you know suggest new drapes. Very annoying. Um, and any if I look at a magazine or a book, I immediately want to change it. Right? It's like it's a sickness. Um, so I look at this and I'm like, wow, wouldn't that be nice if we could just have a book cover that just had one picture on it instead of these four little tiny pictures? Um, so I redesigned this on the on the train this morning. I think it's much better now. Right? Okay, one picture, and I know where to go. Now that means making a choice, right? That you can't say everything on a book cover. Um, and I think designers, that's how they want to think. Designers like things to be simple and clean and singular, one idea. You can't say it all on the cover of a book. Um, so, so here's a book I, I pulled off my shelf this morning. This is how I wish it looked. Okay, this is like probably what the designer wanted the book to look like. But bad things happened to this book and to the designer that made it. So first we have to add, you know, some more subtitles to the book because going to the bathroom in space is simply not interesting by itself. We got to find out, you know, how long the guy was up there trying to do his business. Um, and, and maybe that, that astronaut, you know, is that... Fascinating enough to have an astronaut floating around in the void? No, I think we need more pictures, more things. And maybe like, okay, exciting, four, new, improved. And this is the actual design. Okay, terrible. Okay, and the way this happens is that a very well-meaning designer gets together with an editor and a marketing person and someone from Barnes and Noble and everybody's got their stuff that they've got to put on the book. And if that designer is not strong, it all ends up there, okay? Everybody's little piece of real estate on the cover of the book. Okay, mm, Steve Martin, I like this book. Now, this is, this is a great book about Steve Martin before he was famous and how he became a comedian, fabulous. And so here's a design where um, it, it looks beautiful like this, but it also looks beautiful with all the crap piled onto it, right? It is a bestseller, and famous people do like the book, and you will like the book. <laughs> and the designer designed it so that it looks good, even with all that stuff on it, okay? And if you think about the challenge that your students have, They've got to make this beautiful piece of art with room for type on it. And we don't know how much type those people at the DOA are going to put on it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's going to be more and more and more and new and improved and, and so on. Okay? Um, this is a book that I did with my graduate students at MICA that we published um, just this October. It's a book about how to publish your own book. Um, we've got lots of information in it about book design, including how to design book covers. Um, and this is the cover for the book. And, and here, you know, we, we have all these images, which sort of goes against my rule, right? One picture. But the publisher insisted that we show the kind of whole process of publishing a book. And we did it in such a way that those images become a frame for the text, bring your attention to the text. If we'd done the book like this with the white background, you know, it becomes really busy, 
right? And you really become over aware of all those five or six different pictures floating around the book cover. Um, so we put in that background, which helps to soften the whole effect, um, helps to make the pictures go away a little bit, right? And so color, we tend to think with our students that color is all about emphasizing things, creating excitement. Well, color is also about de-emphasizing. And when you're designing, often you're trying to make things go away, right? So like that Toni Morrison cover is all about making this beautiful, soft background for the, cover, for the title. This is my favorite book again. I figured, you know, if you just made the background red, it would look better. Okay, so often I think that, you know, a pure white background on a book, especially an eight and a half by 11 book, is really deadly, right? Because when you see eight and a half by 11, it looks like a memo, right? It looks like it came out of your laser printer. Um, and the minute you make the background dark, it takes on body, it has more attitude, it has more heft. Okay, these are some of the cover designs that we did for our book on indie publishing. So all my students had to come up with different designs. Um, and you can see that in each of these, they're really thinking about where is the text going to go. So they want to convey an action about publishing a book, right, and to convey a sense of process. But in every case, they're really thinking about the title and about this idea of focus and bringing our attention to the title. This is a non-winning uh, cover design from the competition. Um, and I think there's probably, you know, a few reasons why it didn't work out for this person. But one of them is that there is no focus. We have all these separate elements floating across the cover. And it's very hard to bring it together into one coherent statement. Okay, technique, very important. Um, your students are going to be working in all different kinds of techniques. That's part of their inspiration. They have skills in different areas. You guys are exposing them to different kinds of techniques. When you're working in design, you have to think about how that technique uh, relates to reproduction, to creating something that's going to be printed. So some of the techniques we used, you know, in our studies for the publishing book, photography, okay? Photography is wonderful, not easy, okay? If you're doing photographs for reproduction, you need very high resolution pictures. And that means 300 DPI at eight and a half by 11. You're not gonna do this with your cell phone. Right, so students are gonna do sketches with cheap cameras and it's not gonna be suitable for reproduction. So it's very important if they want to work photographically, um, the photographs have to be original. They can't be taken off the internet. They belong to somebody else, not legal. Okay, so it has to be original photography. It has to be high quality photography. It has to be high resolution. Okay, very important. So obviously students that are studying photography are gonna know how to do that, but others are gonna need some help um, to create um, images that are suitable quality for reproduction. There's a beautiful book cover um, that I really like that uses photography. Makes it vague. Sometimes being vague is better than being specific, right? So it's showing an idea of a city, but it's not a specific city. It's generic, it's universal. It's a little bit like that Toni Morrison landscape. Beautiful, simple cover design. This is a, a non-winning cover from the competition, one that I think is really cool. I really love it. Um, here's an attempt to do a three-dimensional solution to a book cover. And of course, that means that, you know, if it's 3D, you're gonna have to photograph it. So the real test of a design like this is not how cool is the sculpture, but how cool is the photograph? Because at the end of the day, the photograph has to be printed and reproduced. Um, so this is like a great idea that maybe if it had been photographed better, could have made it as a, as a, as a winning um, entry. Um, digital montage is another area that I'm sure many of your students are interested in. A lot of the um, previous submissions that, that we've looked at are montages of different photographs put together. And the problem with many of these is that the photographs are not original, so they're not legal. 
They're not high resolutions. So they don't reproduce well. So this is an area that your students can do, but they really have to work with high quality imagery. This particular design is all scanned, two-dimensional stuff. And so it can be scanned at very high res, and it turns into a cover that would reproduce well. This is a non-winning cover design from the competition, and we can see that it is very low resolution. Okay, this is not suitable for reproduction. So whatever you might think about the idea is not going to hold up printing 300,000 copies of this. Here's another non-winning design um, example of photo montage, um, digital montage. And I think here, you know, the student would have done better not getting so involved in all the lettering, right? So that the image in the background is kind of interesting, but the lettering is sort of over the top over-processed too much. Students love Photoshop. A little Photoshop goes a long, long way, okay? So here we got a little overactive with the Photoshop. Um, also, it doesn't really say anything about school, right? And one of the, the, the secret laws that we'll learn uh, later is no faces, okay? So here's like, girls love to do big eyes and beautiful pictures of faces, but that doesn't really say anything about school and high school and education. Um, Vector-based illustration, so using Adobe Illustrator or similar software, gets you around the problem of high resolution. And so many of your students, I'm sure, are using this software, and they can create images where you don't have to worry about the 300 DPI rule. Um, so these are examples from our book where we did illustrations that are vector-based and can be reproduced at any scale without any problem. And here's one from a winning uh, cover design from the competition that's a vector-based illustration. And very creative, very nice um, interpretation of the city. Um, fun, you know, and so this is digitally produced, uh, but it's done in a way that can be reproduced, which is essential. This is um, design, has to, has to be manufacturing ready. And then there's art, there's the real stuff, handmade, hand-painted images. Um, this is by Myra Coleman, who's one of the great children's book designers and um, illustrates books for adults as well. And it's a beautiful book cover that is hand-painted, and that's a great medium for students to use for this contest. The computer is not everything, and you can get beautiful results, obviously, by hand. This is beautifully designed. It's not just a beautiful painting. It's also a simple, clear design with a focus, with a clear background, with space for the type. Um, so it's hand done, but it's following the same rules of design that we would ask from a, a computer generated um, project. This is a beautiful one, a non-winning uh, cover design. I'm not the judge. I would have picked this. I think it's fabulous. Beautiful hand done drawing and painting um, that has focus. It has a place for the type. It has uh, this kind of magic, um, metaphoric attitude to it. It's not too literal. Um, and this is a winning design that has this beautiful painting of um, school-related stuff and the background of the city, the skyline behind it. Um, beautiful, I don't know who the, the teacher is for this, but really beautiful painting, beautifully done. Of course, the minute I look at it, I want to redesign it, okay? Because here's one where we have um, this wonderful painting, but the design of the book is all separate, right? It's like a mat board around the picture. So I'd rather see it be like that, right? And have the painting take over the whole cover and get the type out of the way. Um, one of the things that you'll see in the entry form for the competition is that students are designing the front of the book and also the back. And so designing the back is an interpretation of the front that takes on a, a, a different feeling but continues the idea from the front. And these are some beautiful examples from uh, previous years. I think this is really 
great how it just takes those graphic elements to create the back. And they're very connected visually and yet also very different from each other. And this is that digital illustration where we see that landscape continuing onto the back. So your students need to think about that and how is the front and the back different. This is the winning design uh, from the current year. And actually, I like the back better than the front, right? <laughs> Took me a long time to figure out what that is. That's a map of the New York region. And I think it works very well as a design, partly because it is abstract. It does go away, right? The title can stand against it and be very readable. Um, but actually, the back, I think, is a more exciting image by itself. And so, you know, the final point is about the fact that this book cover is not just a book cover. It is a logo for the entire year, okay? Um, so this design that your students are going to do, the one that wins, will be used on all kinds of stuff. It will become a symbol for high school in New York City for that entire year. So here are just a few of the ways that this year's design is used on other kinds of stuff, right? So this is a middle school directory. Here this thing is being used like a postcard. You know, and clearly the designers at the DOE are excited about how much fun it is to work with this beautiful piece of graphics that they can apply to all kinds of stuff, their websites, everything. So it really is more than a book cover. It is a logo. It's like packaging. It is a consistent image that gets used on lots and lots of stuff. So those are the design principles, but of course you've got the problem of what's it about? Okay, the students have to come up with subject matter. They gotta come up with a concept for their cover. Um, what I do with my students when we work on a project is we do group brainstorming. Students are all very private about their work. They want to do their own project. They don't want to collaborate. It's theirs. They want to cover their paper while they're working. Um, but I think it's really important to open them up at the beginning and to have people work as a group and simply come up with the vocabulary of a project. This is from my classroom. Um, and I'll show you just briefly brainstorming that we did we had a project to design an editorial illustration for the New York Times for the letters to the editor section on the subject of consumerism. So, at, and we had four hours to do it, right? It was a very fast, real world project. So as a group, we came up with all the different ways that you could represent consumerism. And everybody participated. A lot of the ideas are cliches, and a lot of them are surprising, right? So like, a price tag might be the first thing you think of, but angry small children is not so obvious, right? But really, isn't that what shopping is all about? Right? So by getting everybody to sit and come up with ideas all at once, and we put them all on the board so that while they were working, they could look at that stuff um, and be inspired. And here's a few of the designs that they came up with. So for example, shopping cart is one of the symbols of shopping that is sort of a cliche. But it's not a cliche to have it coming down somebody's head. And it's not a cliche to have a house and a car and a college education inside your shopping cart, right? Or this is the one that actually got published in the New York Times. Having that shopping cart be overloaded with stuff that couldn't possibly fit inside it, that's not a cliche. Um, when you come to do your project with your students, there's a lot of cliches out there. And it's important to get them all out, to write them all down, because often the coolest idea is some inversion or reinvention of a cliche. Okay, so here's some of the cliches that you're not supposed to do. Okay, and this is secret. Um, transportation, no taxis, no subways, no buses, okay. Um, no apples, no Statue of Liberty, no sharp objects, okay? <laughs> no liquids or gels and, you know, over three ounces. Um, no bridges, no text-only designs, and we know why, because we gotta be able to change that text, 
right? So don't, don't make a text-only design. And no Manhattan-centric imagery. Okay, this is the entire New York City. Hello. <laughs> and we got to represent everyone. Here's what they do want. School-based imagery works for all ethnicities, works for all boroughs, and reproducible at different scales. Oh, we want to be able to change the color. Okay, so that's some pretty tough stuff to come up with, right? And somewhere I think no faces got, got off my list, but that's on the list too, no faces. Okay, it's too specific. So here's one, this has got it all. It's an apple, it's a subway map, and it's Manhattan. Okay, it's a beautiful design, right? And who knew? Because these are secret rules. Okay, but now you know, and you can make sure that nobody does those things. Okay, I think that's going to wrap it up, and Aaron's going to say. All right, I just want to thank you again for coming out here tonight. If you came in late and didn't get a chance, there's a bunch of great materials on the table there about upcoming programs here at the Cooper Hewitt. There's a $5 off postcard. Take as many of those as you'd like within reason. Um, there's also a poster there designed for the other 90%. It's a great uh, addition to your classroom. And my card is out there as well as Madeline Diaz, who runs the teen high school program design directions. If you have any questions about bringing your students here to the museum, please feel free to get in touch with me. And if you have any questions about design directions, get in touch with Madeline. And thank you again. Best of luck to you and your students for this. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you.